the romance of Princess Kate and Prince William. And do you think they will be taking the throne anytime soon with, with King Charles and his cancer diagnosis? Let's unpack the Bozzy astrology of these royals. This is Lydia Nitya, and this is Karma Chameleon. On this channel, we cover all things feng shui and Bozzy Chinese astrology. I often love to read the charts of famous people because it says so much about our own charts, our own lives, our own relationships. So I will put the link for the King Charles read that I just filmed. And now this is kind of a part two. And what we're looking at is can we see in Princess Kate and Prince William's charts a correlation with King Charles's chart? There's all this movement going on with the three of them that I think is going to be very interesting to look at together. So if this is something that speaks to you, please subscribe, follow, and please be a super subscriber. I very much appreciate that support. All right, here we go. So remember, let's just flash back to the other video I did. King Charles is going to go through a luck cycle change in, um, sorry, which chart am I looking at here? In 2026, which is two years from now. And that's an interesting thing to acknowledge because I had said that King Charles's chart looks to me like this next luck cycle for him in his Bozzy astrology. And remember that when we're looking at uh, someone's astrology chart, in Bozzy astrology, we go through these 10-year luck cycles. Now, they certainly aren't always lucky, but they bring in an element or elements and a zodiac animal that very much can bring in all kinds of shifts and changes in our lives. It's kind of like how sometimes we wind up with um, having a health crisis or suddenly having a big windfall of money. All kinds of things are going on. So, sorry, the power just came back on in my house, so everything's booting back up. All right, so King Charles is going through this luck cycle change in two years. Now, I already said that I don't think that this cancer is going to be um, a life changer. But, like, I don't think it's going to initially kill him. But do I think he's going to be king for long? No. And one of the clues to this is that in 2026, the luck cycle he moves into mostly mirrors his life pillar. It is also a void time. He's in a void now from 2016 into this next cycle coming up. So it's 20 years of void that he's in. And voids are times in our lives. We all have two zodiac animals in, that are our void animals. And it is a time in our life when things just, it's like moving through mud. You can't make a decent decision. Your mind is foggy. Um, things just are harder to do, harder to get things going. Harder to get things to stick once they just do, do go, you know. And so the luck cycle he's moving into is going to be very much about service, about faith. Um, yeah, and about his spiritual life. And along with that is a major shift in his career. And um, and I do believe that it is going to be in that luck cycle, ages 77 to 86, in which he's going to give the throne over to Prince William. And I don't think it is going to be a long wait. 
Um, and again, a reminder that King Charles has this very bizarre chart in which he has of his own element over 80%. And this is a very unique chart. I don't necessarily see this as the strongest chart for a king. There is certainly leadership, but I see this as someone who is very independent and someone who um, I would say almost prefers to be alone. I don't think this is a role that's suited to him. And we talked about his hour, King uh, Charles's hour, in which it's like this tug of war almost of his identity. This is who I am, and this is who I am, the role that I'm supposed to be playing, which is not necessarily his true self. It is, you know, obviously it's some part of himself, but it's not what I would call his really like his wheelhouse. And it's got to be a weird thing to grow up knowing this is your fate and you don't have really a choice. And it doesn't, you know, your astrology may or may not support the role that you're moving into. Now let's look at Prince William. Prince William is born June 21st, 1982 at 2003. And this is a Yang water dog year, a Yang fire horse month, a yin wood pig day, and a Yang fire dog hour. So the year and the hour are the same. Interesting that the dog shows up here. Now, why do I say that is the dog is all about justice and it's also about loyalty. The year are his elders. This is his lineage. This is him in line for the throne. Going straight from those elders to his career and also his children who are next in line after him. Now, this is interesting because William and Kate are very young. You know, when we look around at world leaders, certainly here in the United States, like uh, just seems to be a bevy of old people with old mindsets, right? I mean, even Prince or King Charles, I have to keep remembering it's King Charles now. Even King Charles has the affliction in his chart of a fixed mindset. So um, with, with Prince William, let's look for this book here. With Prince William, it's so interesting, the differences in personality um, with his father, okay? Um, his dad is super, super smart, very innovative, very creative. I, who knows, maybe he would have been an artist if he didn't have to be a king or a prince, right? But, um, you know, Prince William's chart really speaks of somebody who doesn't necessarily have that strength as a leader, but what he has is the gift of service. His main role in life is to serve others, to be of benefit, to help people. In yoga, we call that a karma yogi, okay? And so that is very, very strong signature in his chart. In addition, this is someone, and let me just say that Kate has these same qualities. This is where these two very much connect. They are both big communicators. They love to talk. They, um, are really great at helping people and being doing that service work to humanity, of giving back to humanity. They both have a strong drive to succeed. They have a high, um, a strong work ethic. Um, they both are born to have um, big love. 
and big romance and you see that spark with them that's so cute um and they both um are destined to have a to have wealth and a luxurious lifestyle they both are idealists and dreamers and for the world we're moving into this age of Aquarius in period nine, which is so much the same message. It's a time of innovation, of looking outside the box, not having a fixed mindset, being open to this new world that we're moving into. This higher vibration 5D world is going to require that we have leaders around the world that are looking for new ways of doing things that adapt to a changing environment, the need for drinkable water, the need to grow food when the world might be becoming a desert or a floodplain, all these things. So the fact that they both have this, um, this visionary mindset, the dreamer, right? These are the people that bring change, positive change to our world. Not doing things the way they've been done. We are so over that. Oh my God, yes. All right, so um, what else was I going to say about these two? So Prince William is also, like his dad, super, super smart. I would not say that he's necessarily creative like his dad, but he is a, he's more book smart, okay? And so when we look at this loyalty of the dog so strong, and when we're looking at his hour, um, we're seeing wealth, travel, um, the marriage, his marriage to Kate, we're seeing his job nestled in there as a challenge, but something that he also enjoys doing. And this is a job, his work is very much, and this showed up with his dad too. Yeah, this innovation, rebelliousness, wanting to um, do things in a different way. And I, I do think that if, you know, when, not if, but when Prince William becomes King William, it is going to bring a lot of change to England. And I think this could be a good thing. I think that change right now is beyond necessary to get us out of this antiquated, 3D top-down authority patriarchal system that we've just been plagued with for way too long. Now, the the thing the I wanted to mention a few things here. One is that Prince William's second luck cycle change was at the age of 14 in 1997, the year his mother died. That was a luck cycle change year for him, okay? And it's interesting um, that in that luck cycle of a Yang Earth monkey, that it was talking about romance, because this was ages 14 to 23, um, the chance of finding the love of his life, which I think he did. I think he, he and Kate met during that time. I did want watch the crown. I should know some of this, though I know the accuracy isn't 100% with the show, but it was, you know, you got to admit the crown was an awesome show. All right. So there's that going on. There's travel and all of his wealth, the duties to family really soar in his life now. Um, as he's taking on more and more responsibility. And nestled in the monkey is his mom. Yeah, so really sad. And um, so then we're going to jump, jump, jump up to 2017. His current luck cycle, which is Yang Metal Dog. And this is such a mirror 
of his year and his hour, but 2024 with the dragon is banging up against all three dogs. Now, I just am looking at this and realizing this. Kate is born in the year of the rooster. And it's interesting because her chart has a dog, a dragon, and a rooster, which is kind of like coming in with a problem, but also having the solution. It's like, yeah, I know this is a hot mess, but don't worry, because the solution's right over here. In that way, it's like she's absolved of the conflict, which is lovely. That's like a superpower almost. And then, so she is his saving grace this year. She is absolutely his saving grace. And he is a yin wood person. Um, just to mention, he is too yang, which will help him as king. It will give him that assertiveness and authority, okay? Um, so as a wood person, he's slightly weak, 14%. Nourished by water, 18% balanced. Excessively strong fire, which is his output, that's 48%, almost 50%. 22% earth, nicely balanced, but metal is very weak. And this is his career and his marriage. But, and this is where couple charts are fascinating. Where one is weak, the other is strong. I'm a water person. I have very weak water, but I have very strong fire. My boyfriend has very strong water and very weak fire, or very strong water, very weak water and fire. So it's like we balance each other. And that is so important. Because if you have a situation where both people have too much of one element, it, it's just, it's, it's not a, the ideal situation at all. So, um, as we're looking at his luck cycle, this current one he's in is all about his duties, his responsibility to family, which we know that's a big deal, and his work. It's also talking about his wife with Kate, his life with her, prospering and making money. It is about his job changing. His job and his role are changing. He's enjoying all of this. He loves this work. This is something that is in his wheelhouse. That dog in his year and in his hour speaks of someone that is here to save the day. It's like a hero mark, okay? And um, yeah, so when we jump ahead to 2027, his next luck cycle, and remember 2026 is when King Charles changes his luck cycle. This is a year later that Prince William does. What happens in Prince William's chart? Ma massive is what I wrote down. Massive role change in his job. It speaks of government, politics, and that's the crown. It's right there. And underneath of this, this is a yin metal pig influencing Prince William's chart. Inside of this is a change of role. It's a role change. He's taking on a new identity as king in 2027 luck cycle. That's between 2027 and 2037. But like I said, I don't think this is going to take an entire 10 years to manifest. I think that somewhere in the next few years, he is going to be king. That's my prediction. And it will be interesting to see when we look at the dragon coming in this year. Um, the dragon for 2024 with that Yang Wood is asking him now to take on new roles. I imagine this scare with Prince Charles's health is going to be a call for him to step up 
there may be times when maybe he and and Queen Camilla are having to do more behind the scenes leadership. Now, again, the dragon is banging up against both his career and his year. This is not an easy year for him, even with his wife holding the, the safety net of the rooster, which is the protection animal for anyone who has this affliction in their chart. Now, all of that being said, this year very much focuses on travel, his marriage, his wealth. And underneath all of this is his continued work in service. Then, um, and also holding agency on himself and holding on to that. So um, I don't know if I went through his pillars, but his pillars are Yang Water Dog, Yang Fire Horse, Yin Wood pig and yang fire dog. So I'll show you that one. Okay. Truly fascinating, right? All right. We are now jumping over to Miss Kate. There's her chart. Now this gets interesting, right? Because we're talking about three people here. And these three people all are interconnected. Okay. This is like, you can't make this stuff up. Now, where William is got so much output, Kate has too much resource. This is a Zhao bird chart for Kate, born January 9th, 1982 at 1910, because she has over 60% metal in her chart. This is, um, you know, a situation where um, it's too much of a good thing. It's like she's drowning in it. And then she's balanced in her own element of, of water. She has hardly any wood, which, you know, there's only 2%. Then there's only 2% again of fire, but she benefits from his his fire, and then her earth is strong at 28%. She's balanced with yin yang. And as a water person, interesting that this is an earth pattern chart and the earth nourishing that metal. Um, so this is a fake follow resource. Um, not a dominant chart, I don't think. There's a semi-metal trio, but there's no full trio. She does have um, yin metal rooster, yin metal ox, yang water dragon, that's her year. And then a yang metal dog, hour. So her day pillar and her hour are in conflict. And this is kind of an interesting juxtaposition because normally I would say that that would speak of someone who is at odds with their job or that there is conflict between her and her work and her husband, her work and her children. There's just conflict. But again, the rooster in her year kind of soothes all of this, which really is a saving grace. All right, so when we look at her, um, her hour is very much about service. It is challenging work. And tucked into that is government and the role of the mother. You know, her role in government and her role as a mother. And there is prospering and wealth and travel tucked in that as well. Um, so that speaks very much to someone who, you know, it's interesting, both she and William are born in the hour of the dog. And it's interesting to me that they both really have that, um, that work ethic of service, of duty, of responsibility, loyalty, and caring for caring for others. Now, when we look at her chart, um, 
She recently went through a luck cycle change in 2023, last year. And this is bringing in a Yang Fire monkey that's very much about her service work, about her faith. It's about her sovereignty, her agency. It speaks of father figures. And certainly her life is very much um, influenced by King Charles. And this is about her, um, yeah, and and the influence of father figures in her life is very strong in this luck cycle. Now, in this, there is mention of a change in her job, a change in her job status. All of this, again, is lining up for this change happening around 2027. That's when I think this is going to happen, that King Charles will abdicate the throne somewhere around 2027. And this is right in line with um, Princess Kate's chart signaling a change in her job and the role of and the influence of father figures. OK, and um I just, I find this all just so fascinating. I welcome your questions and comments. And um, yeah, this is, uh, this is some cool stuff. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I so appreciate your presence. And until next time, be well.